What's going on? It's Michael with Walk the Path. I'm here today with Dr. Laura Lucan, and I first got introduced to her through a run group here in Cincinnati. And from a friend, I had heard a little bit about her story. So I wanted to bring her in today to talk about her journey and then talk a little bit about running. She's very big into running, and we'll get a little bit more into that in detail here shortly. So it was, it was a very, I thought to be, very interesting study. Um, at the same time, when I got diagnosed a second time, I had decided to um, race my first Ironman. Oh, wow. So I was thoroughly irritated again, which just, <laughs> what seems to be a theme with us. It's like, oh, it's so inconvenient, right? Um, I, was, I was thoroughly irritated when I got diagnosed with breast cancer for the second time because I was, I, I had literally one month before just signed up for Ironman Louisville. Wow. So my first, my first Ironman. I done, um, Muncie, uh, which is a 70.3 or a half uh, Ironman the year before, and I was, I was all sorts of jazz to do it. Um, <laughs> I had a really good coach at the time, and she was a very dear friend of mine, and she um, found a way to enable me to train, continue to train throughout all of my treatments. Oh, wow. Okay. Obviously you, at a different level, but... And when you when you're talking about some of these half marathons, marathons, and now getting into the Ironmans, what what level are you at at this point? I'm uh, amateur. Okay, um, but I mean it's more than you're not necessarily just trying to complete. It. You're, you're. Oh still... yeah, I'm racing for times. Um, I was for my first first marathon. I qualified for Boston. I ran a three twenty nine. Wow. So which okay. was um, which was a, 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 a okay time. Um, and I was excited to qualify for Boston, and um, then for my first half Ironman, I think I did a five, five forty, just fine, five thirty maybe. I was fourth in my age group, wow. um, which I was happy with. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to get better. I was trying to okay. get faster, and I had you know I had had hooked up with this. Um, woman Tamara quit and she was my coach and she was helping me and so she was helping me to train for Ironman and I actually had my my sights set on qualifying for Kona at my first Ironman. Wow. Um, and that, that did not happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I came close but that did, that did not happen. Um, but so I, I was I was devastated and so I think that one thing that is important to keep in mind, at least for me, is your ability to how to cope, right? Mm -hmm. And one way that I cope with stress is through exercise, a, a lot of exercise. <laughs> Not that I have a really high stress life or anything like that, but I just I really enjoy it. I enjoy, I like, I enjoy the physical part of it, but I enjoy the time that I get to think. I enjoy the people who I get to meet. You know, mm -hmm. you get to meet just this these all these different people who you never would come in contact. Sure. Right. So um, I, I was really upset, and so she said, "Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're just going to, you know, going into it, I, I was okay. I mean, I didn't and this know. is at how long from when you were going to do the Ironman? Rules the first. Um, I'm sorry, the last Sunday in August. Okay. And, and you was, were diagnosed. This was December of the previous year, so okay. it was you know nine months away. So it was a long time, um, you know, but you know, when you think about doing an Ironman for the first time, nine months doesn't seem like, you know, that long. I mean, it is. I mean, you can, you can train for Ironman much less than that, but mm -hmm. at that point, I was like, I need, I need all of this time. So um, <laughs> we decided to kind of do this. I knew when I was going to go in for radiation, um, and it was this really intensive one-week radiation cycle. So usually when you do radiation, you do radiation you know, once every week for several weeks. This was, I was doing radiation therapy, it was called point radiation therapy, every day. Wow. For eight days. Wow. Well, it was eight days. So, and it was exhausting. Like, I never thought that doing anything like laying down and getting blasted with radiation would wipe me out so much, but I just slept for days and days and days. So, um, she built my, my training program so that I've had a really intensive week, um, two weeks before okay. so that I would be mentally like it would make sense in my head because we would build 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 and then come back down 
so that I would recover and adapt, build, 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 recover and adapt. So we, that mentally I was in a recovery and adapting period. During the radiation. During the radiation. Okay. So I wouldn't be like freaking out as much. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what, that's what we ended up doing. Um, did you, during this time, did you have any issues with diet? Because I know a lot of people when they go through the treatment, there are certain things that they just can't eat anymore or just... Oh, I didn't all really eat a whole lot at all. Um, I was already at that point, I had been studying, you know, diet and dietary effects, um, you know, on, on your physiology a lot anyway. So, I mean, I had a very healthy diet. Um, my coach, I would, I would go and see her. So she, I lived in Indianapolis. My PhD program was in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. So it was an hour drive there every day and an hour drive back. And she kind of lived halfway in between in the middle of nowhere, which was great because it was just all these Indiana country roads we would run. Oh, yeah. So I would up really early and I would go and I would see her. And she had, she had, she had a large family. I think she, at that point, she had seven kids, six kids. Um, wow. it, it was wonderful. <laughs> and it was like a little farm. So we would go and then she would run with me and she would train me. I would go there and she would train me. She, she would make me breakfast with all of her, you know, <laughs> her hens, you know, eggs from her hens and yeah, stuff like that, right. and, you That's know, awesome. take care of me, and then send me, send me to my, my program, and I would, then on my way back, I would come, and I would do my second practice of the day, and she would, you know, send me home. So, I mean, it was, it worked really well, because she was monitoring everything that I was kind of consuming during that time, it was all pretty much um, fruit and plant-based. I couldn't stomach meats very well, Okay. any meats. Um, and I, I pretty much only eat fish and, and chicken sometimes. Sure. Uh, now I will eat um, beef because I need the iron and I supplement with iron now. Um, okay. I have to. I have to do supplementation for the miles that I run. But at that time, that's what I would do. And I would do smoothies. So I would like. Well, there you go. Right. So <laughs> there we go. Right do, there. <laughs> I would take um, empty soda bottles. I would empty out like those big two-liter soda bottles. And before I would have radiation for that week, I would make just massive amounts. And this is what I did before I had my uh, my first surgery too, um, which is where I got the idea. And I would just make tons and tons of smoothies and that's what I would eat. Because wow. I could stomach it, it was right there and I could continue to mm -hmm. consume it, mm -hmm. you know, throughout. So Yeah. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly on the smoothie. <laughs> back to back to your story. You're going along, you're doing you're working up, you're building and then you're doing the radiation. I mean were there setbacks that you had along the way or was it I mean, were things just kind of rocking and rolling as you went through to get to the August date? You know, I'll say, what I'll say is I don't, I don't know. I had no expectations going into it. I've never, I had never done an Ironman before. Yeah. I, um, I have a, a personality where if you talk to any of my, my coaches that I've had throughout my life, it's a good thing that I blindly follow things. Um. You know, I'm not you know, not to the point where if I don't feel well, I'll go and do that. Like we have conversations, especially now with my coach. It's a very uh, dynamic relationship that I'm, I'm very lucky to have. But I will blindly follow things. So I just did whatever Tamara told me to do, and I was fine. I mean, it was really rough, but I had no expectations on um, where I was supposed to be mm -hmm. leading up to that. Sure. Um, so then come Iron Man Day, how are you feeling? Oh, Iron Man was great. Um, interestingly enough, that whole year was really good. I So I actually came to Cincinnati for my first time that year. Um, we had signed me up for the Flying Pig Marathon, um, which is our, our local marathon here. And um, I drove down from Indianapolis. My friend and I were doing it. And my coach, Tamara, was supposed to run it with me too because Tamara ran all of my um, she paced me, she told me when to eat, when to drink, when to speed up, when to slow down. And when I run, even to this day, like people are like, oh my god, it's so beautiful, did you say no? I run like this, like <laughs> straight ahead, I had no idea what's going on around me, I just run. So, um, this was part, this was a mile marker for Iron Man, I was going to do this, this marathon in May. So I come down and, um, you know, it was maybe a week and a half or two weeks before I was supposed to come down. I'm on this run. It was an eight-mile progression, and I remember I remember it exactly because it was so traumatic. And I'm running with Tamara, and Tamara's like, I, you know, I want to I want to talk to you about something. And I'm like, oh, okay. And she goes, well, I I don't think that I'm going to be able to run with you for um, the flying pig. And I was just like, 
what? <laughs> like my left, and she's like, well, I'm, I'm pregnant. Oh, wow. And I was just like, uh, oh, why? <laughs> How like, could you do every, this? Every selfish thing in my head. So she was just like, yeah, it's just not going to happen. You know, you're going you're gonna to go and you're going to run this marathon and you're going to be totally fine and you're just going to go do it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I came down here and um, I got to the starting line and um, our strategy is that I would find somebody to pace off of. Mm -hmm. try to find to pace off of. And I found it. Um, I started running and there was this girl in front of me. She was... I was running faster than I'd ever run before. I mean, at that point in time, I, I felt like I was flying. And I was pacing off this girl, and it's great. Like we, And she was right on every mile. It was wonderful. And uh, it's Flying Pig at mile 13, right as you come down, you read before you went to Miramont, there's a guy that stands there. And I don't know, I'm guessing he does this for guys too, but for women, if, they're, if you're in the top 20, that he tells you, so you know where you are. And I think she was 14th and I was 15. Wow. And... You know, at that time, I was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I, was, I was so jazzed. And he told us that, and it was like she put the brakes on. She just, like, I don't know if she hit a wall or what happened, but she just started slowing down. And I didn't know what to do. Sure. So I started screaming at her. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, like, we're top 20 people. You've got to run. Like, just, just screaming. Yeah. I, mean, I just didn't know what to do. It was caving in. And um, I'm running, and there's this guy. And this guy goes, he's kind of like right next to us, and he's like, um, whatever wants to run with me. <laughs> and I didn't really know what to do, so I was like, do you want to run with me? And he was like, okay. <laughs> so I start running with this guy, and we start talking, and it turns out that he's doing the same Iron Man I am. Oh, wow, okay. And it was his first Iron Man, too, and I was like, oh, that's neat. And it also turns out that he's run every single flying pig ever since wow. the beginning. <laughs> so he knew the course exactly. So he started telling me, you're going to eat here. You're going to speed up here. There's a water station here. He basically became my talent, right? My coach. Yeah. And he paced me in um, to my fastest marathon at that time, which was the 317, 316, 317, I think it was. 317. Wow. And um, that is now my husband. <laughs> that was Rick. So this, this gentleman, is, uh, his name was Rick, right? His name was Rick Lucan, yeah. And That's awesome. We ended up starting training together for Iron Man. Um, became really good friends. There was a big group of us who all trained together. Mm -hmm. and we did our first Iron Man together. Um, and so he was there that day when I when I got to, to Iron Man. And um, it was he was very, very helpful for Iron Man. And it was great. I mean, Louisville was the best experience. I think if I think if anyone's going to do an Iron Man for the first time outside of Kona. Louisville, even though it's a challenging course, it is the best finish line. And it is the, so well run and so well supported. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and also, maybe at this point, it's good to just take a step back and, and look at kind of the metaphor that is happening. You said you were diagnosed in December. Mm -hmm. And nine months, you had the Iron Man. It was kind of like you're giving birth to this new person. Yeah. That's who you are um, today. I... I and as you met I Rick, definitely you, think you've, you've kind of just stepped into this. And I think actually meeting Rick, I mean, is, is sappy and whatever this that sounds. Rick has a really, um, he's a really great outlook on, on life. Mm -hmm. He likes to just have fun and he's just kind of goofy, right? And I was a little bit too serious. I was very kind of like focused on all of the academics and, you know, all of that stuff. And he, I remember he actually said something, he was doing something really goofy one time and or he wanted to do something, and I just, I, I looked at him, and I was like, why? Like, that's, that sounded so stupid to me. And I remember, I don't remember what it was, but I remember his, his response to me, and it really struck me, he goes, well, because it's fun, <laughs> right? And I mean, that's what it's kind of all about, right? Like, if you're not having fun, what's the point? <laughs> so that's, and that's kind of what, what happened, and we were really, we, and we are really great because we have so much fun together. Yeah. We don't plan stuff, we just kind of go, and we, we have fun. And we like the same thing. We like running and, you know, doing triathlons and meeting people. And, you know, we don't take it, you know, we take it seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. Sure. So. Okay. So talk a little bit more about now after this Ironman, you're starting to transition into getting into elite status as a runner and competing as, you so, know, sponsorships and different things like that. Like, it was a couple of years. It was, it was a couple of years after that. Um, I, I started, you know, 
my times were running were, were getting better. Um, you know, Rick started putting some more structure for, I, I kind of didn't have a coach and Rick kind of coached me for, you know, maybe two years, 2000, yeah, 2009-ish to 2010-ish. Um, yeah. And then during Ironman in 2010, which was the next year after my first one, it just kind of went south. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you can't have a good race every year. Race in Ironman especially, there's so many opportunities for it to go south, right? <laughs> there's so many moving moving parts, and it was so hot. I mean, it, I think it was it was well, it was like 100 degrees, I think, and it was miserable, and I was miserable, and I, I was doing fine. I just got to the run, and I just had stomach issues, and I started walking, and this woman started walking next to me. She's Australian, and um, and she's older. She's an older, you know, woman, um, probably about 40, 43, 44 at the time. Mm -hmm. um, her name was Verity Breen. And really nice. And she just kind of like, you know, it sucks, but it is what it is. And you have to make, I mean, she's really positive. And I kind of connected with her on Facebook after, and she was, um, she's a professional runner. She runs, she races masters now. She was a professional runner in Australia for a really long time. Um, wow and did triathlon and stuff like that. And she was launching um, an apparel company called 30 Birds. And she invited me to apply for a sponsorship. Which is what? This is, yeah, 30 Birds. 30 Birds. Um, they, this, is, this is the casual, the kind of casual stuff, but she makes really um, very technical, high-end racing apparel. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the purpose of it is to function during races. Um, and it's, it's wonderful. It's fabulous. So she, so she accepted me, um, you know, she accepted me as an athlete and she really took a chance on me because I wasn't, you know, at that point, I don't think that my times were, you know, fantastic. I think my, my fastest marathon at point was a 310. Okay. Um, I hadn't even broken 130 and a half yet. And, you know, she, she was like, yeah. When you say 130, for a half marathon. Yes, for a half marathon. Um, and she... And I said, I, I want to, you know, race, triathlon, and, and marathons, and she said, okay. And uh, she sponsored me for a year, and then I think it was, I think it was after one year, um, we decided that she was going to coach me. And that was probably, that's a really huge turning point in my mm -hmm. athletic career. She was so much different than any other coach that I'd ever had. Um, she lived in, in California, so it was a long distance relationship, but it was it was wonderful. And she really So you're saying long distance relationships can work? They can, they can, <laughs> they can. Um it was we would Skype and stuff like that. Sure. She would send me my training plan and she would field all of my um, you know, any trouble that I was having and she would write me uh, you know, she would send me race tactics the night before and she really helped me because I, I was as a scientist, I get kind of caught up in the numbers, and that's sure. really problematic, and so she would teach me to run without